I spoke to Brother Garfield briefly on, on my messenger. And, um, yeah, he agreed to come on live. So hopefully he's able to join us so that he is the one that tells, you know, the the community, the black, you know, Hebrew Israelite community, what the hell is going on? Because when we say it, they label us as racist or, you know, therefore you must be Edomized. Therefore, you're an agent. Therefore, you're an informant. Therefore, you're such and such and such. And so we are labeled because we're telling them the truth. Right. But we're going to hear out of the mouth of, uh, you know, uh, a brother that has been exposing the community, the black Hebrew Israelite community with actual facts, which is what we've been doing as well. So come and it's good to have you, brother. I know you and uh, what's his name? Um, um, Shimron, you guys been doing a great job and bringing out a lot of facts, a lot of information. And, you know, your brothers have been furthering the research that Vega, myself, and Quana have been doing. And, you know, it's, it's beautiful to see you brothers, uh, you know, bringing out the facts and exposing the lies as well. So, um, Garfield, brother Garfield, if you're watching this video, please uh, come and join. Uh, you know, we have a, you know, um, a lot of Latinos, Native Americans have been watching um, you exposing a lot of these um, self-hating African Americans uh, from the Black Hebrew Israelite community, and they've been paying attention. I know myself; I've been watching you debate a lot of these Black Hebrew Israelites. And so nobody that went on a ship ever called themselves a Hebrew Israelite, and that's why you know, in the last hundred years, this thing was developed. I love the fact that the brother, what's the brother name? Local leaders from the community, and. Um, you know, uh, you've been doing a great job and you've been bringing out facts and a lot of brothers are hating on you. A lot of brothers are operating in a spirit of hate because you were exposing their agenda. Hey, Garfield, show one, bro. What's up, Peace man? What's you, up? Brother. What's up? What's up, family? I'm actually coming from the gym <laughs> and I went grocery Not shopping. Not for a lot, man. Just, I got to work out for these chilling, Hebrews, man. I got to work out for these Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> I got to stay fit. I know, bro. I know. <laughs> we... Believe me, believe me, a lot of people are watching, you know, and like I was telling you in the inbox, um, I have a lot of Latinos and Native Americans are watching what you're saying. Mm -hmm. They're watching what you're saying. They're watching the facts that you're bringing out. They're watching how you're basically bringing out the blaze to destroy basically the pseudo information mm -hmm. that a lot of these black Hebrew Israelites are pushing out to, to deceive their own people, you know, and it's, it's just sad that you have a lot of these brothers hating Africans themselves when they themselves are Africans. Yeah. And that's yep. the thing that many don't understand. You're separating you you're separating yourself from your own roots. Yep. You're separating yourself from, from where you come from. That's that's insane. And then this is what we tell the community because there's this group of my myself and other brothers and sisters exposing the, the pseudo agenda that a lot of these black Hebrews let's are pushing out to deceive themselves and also to uh, um, hate Africa, the motherland, this is not the third, you know? And a lot of brothers nowadays within the community and other groups as well, they're pushing a, you know, they're saying, well, we're the actual Native Americans. When in fact, the phenotypes lie. They're not, Afri they're not Native Americans, yep. yet they're taking on someone else's culture in order to hate themselves because that's a, that's a form of self hate, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I right. think I so, think you know. Tell, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, beloved. So why don't why don't you tell why don't you tell the the viewers who you are? If you have a YouTube channel, you know, tell tell them where you where they can find you. This and then the third. All right, pretty much. Um, my name is Garfield A. Reed, and um, I think my name comes up as Garfield Reed. Um, on YouTube, it's the Dagger Squad. And um, on Instagram, I think it's brother brother Garfield Reed, and on Twitter it's brother Garfield. Um, let me say this, man. I, I think humans on a whole wants to humans on a whole want to attach themselves to storylines and greatness, you know. And some of the oral traditions when you read up West African history, you see a lot of the oral traditions are trying to attach themselves to either Islam. So they'll say that they come from Mecca, they'll say they come from Canaan, and they come from Israel. 
or they come from somewhere in the east or they come from Egypt. And I think um, it, it, some of it is in there, the Hamitic hypothesis. That played a role with them, uh-huh. with, with them um, doing all of that stuff. I'm just saying that why can't we just... But you know what, though? Let me, let me play both sides for a second. Let me do both sides. One of the disadvantages we have is that the, the black folks in the West from Africa, we were kidnapped victims. So when you're a kidnapped victim and somebody has taken you from your, your language, your folkways, your mores, your norms, your traditions, your culture, your gods, when they take you away from all of that, you pretty much lost your mind. You don't know who you are. So what you do is you latch on to whatever you see. You know, so if somebody says a rat is the god and you the rat people, you're going to latch on to that. If you see them a part of greatness, right. you're going to jump on to that. So what I feel is that black folks don't know their identity. And one of the ways that we, 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 we help folks is by educating them about um, archaeology, about anthropology, which is migration, um, about um, DNA genetics, linguistics, history. So once you start studying and start to be, you know, kind of scholarly, you, 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 a lot of people's minds get free up from all of this because we really don't know who we are. I'm sorry. Until we start studying. So what I, what I suggest mm-hmm. everybody, everybody, it doesn't matter which background you come from, try to study who you are. DNA is not an end-all, be-all. DNA is going to send you to a geographic location, but it's also going to tell you where your roots are. So your roots could be, if you if you have the, the DNA markers for here, it's DNA markers <clears throat> for here, it's going to show here. If you don't, it's just not going to show it. You can't claim to be something when you don't have a connection to it. I did six to seven DNA tests. All of them come up, I'm um, West African, 80 to 90%. It, I, there's no wrong. I already knew I was from Ghana because my mom used to tell me Anansi stories. And in Jamaica, you, you have a bunch of the, the maroons. The main set of maroons were from Ghana. The national dish in Jamaica is Aki and sausage, which is from Ghana. So there's no running around where we're from. You understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, right, even right. the Jamaican dialect, the, 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 the patois that we speak, is a dialect. It's connected to the Twi language, which again is from West Africa. So we can't get around uh-huh. where we're from. So for me now to come on and say, oh, I'm from this specific tribe or that tribe, I'd be, I'd be just basically a traitor to my own culture. And it, it's called, you're ashamed to be who you are. But West Africa has some great cultures. It's just that we don't talk about right. it enough. So at the end of the day, and then some of them want to latch on to Egypt because, again, they want to latch on to greatness. We are mainly right. West Africans. That's all we are. We are not native. We are not from here. And we need to stop living that lie. And that's the bottom line. And they don't want to take a DNA test because they want to say it's the white man's science. But the truth is, anybody born in America from the 1960s, the government already has your DNA because they have something called newborn pre-screening where you check blood from the mother and some of it you don't even need permission from the parent. People don't even know that. You don't need um, permission for mandatory testing for children to prevent diseases or conditions. You know, you, your baby might be born blind because of something that the mother has. So for us to catch that, you need to, um, what do you call it? Hold on a second. You got more stuff here, okay? All right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, man. So, I, I mean, if anybody have any questions or want to talk or anything, I'm here. I'm just saying, man, stop, stop, stop the identity theft. That's what you're doing. You're doing identity theft. We don't need no more identity <laughs> theft going right. on, man, in a, especially in our communities. A lot, of people, a lot of people steal identities to get money. What's the purpose of you stealing to try to be a Hebrew or Native American or whatever? What's your purpose? What are you getting out of that? Come on, man. Listen, family. Stop the fake. Stop fake. Just stop faking it. That's what you're doing right now. All right? Well, go ahead, my brother. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing all that, you know, and this is this is exactly what um, ourselves have been saying to the they're community. Not, not and guess what? We, we are labeled as racist because we're telling the same thing that you're saying. Right. And so what do you have to say with the people that are claiming that, for example, the people from Ghana claim to be the Jewish people, you know, 
And then ourselves, according to our research, we've been saying that a lot of the customs that they have or the Hebrew isms of, you know, a lot of these Africans, beautiful tribes, by the way, beautiful people, beautiful countries. A lot of people don't focus on the on, on, on the really poor sections of Africa, but Africa is a beautiful uh, an amazing nation, of, uh, of con a continent of many nations and beautiful nations, by the way. And and so my question is, what do you have to say to um, the black Hebrew Israelite community that are saying that the people from Ghana are actually the Jewish people? Um, they actually do themselves. All right. Um, as I said before, there's a book called Black and Slave by a guy named Goldberg. He has the current consensus of West African traditions. It's basically, there's a gentleman by the name of, um, he wrote the book on Oida too, Oida. Um, I forgot his name right now. It's off to, it's, uh, man, damn. He's like the number one researcher when it comes to West African oral traditions. Basically, the consensus is that most of the stories that they come from are legendary. They are not true. It's what, it's, it's been a, it's an, Arabic infusion into the culture that the, Tal the Talmud is allegedly came out and said that the Hamites were, were cursed and they actually took it literal so a lot of people they don't say that they're Hamites they say that the Africans around them are Hamites but we are Shem and we are not cursed but those people around us are mm -hmm. cursed so they try to it's just like with the Igala people in Igbo land they say, oh, them people over there, they, they are Hamites. We are, no, we are not cursed. We are Israelites. So it, 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 it's, it's, it's something that's been going on for years. It's the influence because when you're colonized, a lot of people like to take on the people that, are, that, 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 that looks better than them. Traders would come into the area from right. Morocco. The Sephardic Jews would come in and sleep with the, with the, with the king's um, daughters, <laughs> which would create what's called a Luso Africans. So those Africans from mm -hmm. there go on to learn Judaism and they feel already dark skinned, they feel like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. And so a lot of that went on. But what, what I'm going to say is this, man. You could tell the Jews in West Africa who are Jews. One, they're very good with money. And two, they actually <laughs> help to finance the slave trade. You'll never find anybody that claimed they were a Jew in West Africa that was on a slave ship. This is how you get them. Nobody came over on a slave ship and said, I'm a Hebrew or I'm an Israelite. They didn't carry any of those traditions. They carried on the Ifa traditions. They carried on the Igbo traditions. They carried on the Akan traditions. They carried on Yoruba traditions. You could go right now to Jamaica. Jamaica had 50% of the Igbos that came over on the slave trade came through Jamaica. In Jamaica now, we have what's called a Junkanoo Festival. We wear different masks. And we jump and we dance and do all type of stuff. In, in, in Cuba, you have the Ekpe, the Ekpe Society, which is a secret society of the Igbos. You also have them in, in Haiti. You also have them, I think, in Suriname in, with the winter religion. So you have, and that also kills the whole 12 tribe concept, by the way, because how do you have Igbos in Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, and Suriname <laughs> if the 12 tribes are supposed to be one place and you know what i'm saying you have a con in america right and how we know we got a con in america because in 1712 in new york we had some a con congregate and they would do a ceremony before they go to war have you ever seen lebron james and kevin garnett play basketball all right before right, every game right. what does lebron james do at the beginning of every game do you know what he does he claps a powder no. in the ear he claps a powder in the mm. ear that's a tradition when you're about to go to war. So he's about to go to war right. on the basketball court. So he throws the powder up in the ear. Boom. I'm about to go to war. Him and Kevin Garnett. So when he goes to war, we saw that same tradition with New York in 1712 when they started going around and killing the slave master and white people. That's why they had a law in America. The slave master had a law that black people cannot congregate because of 1712 rebellion in New York. They did the same thing in right. Jamaica. There's a guy named Taki and there's a guy named Three Finger Jack. He said when he does the ritual and clap, the white man's bullet couldn't kill him. So we find the same tradition <laughs> in New York. They do it in Jamaica. Same Akan people from Ghana. So again, that kills the quote unquote 12 tribes because how do you have the same people from Akan from one tribe, the same people in Jamaica? All right. So now we kill that 12 tribe chart and we show traditions that people came off the boat with. 
We have okra mm. that we used to eat in, um, in, in Ghana. We have different traditions, the Gullah Geechee. We have all of that. They came off the boat and carried that tradition. We don't see nobody claiming I'm a Hebrew or Israelite. Nobody. We right. can't find nobody coming off the boat claiming, hey, you know what, man, I'm a Hebrew, Yahweh, da 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 da, or claiming I'm Israelite. Nothing. We can't find nobody. What we found is that you could be a Hebrew or Israelite. There's, there's like four or five different traditions. You had some guy, a guy named Cherry and a guy named Crowdy. Those guys legitimately believed in the biblical text and said, you know what, we Israelites. I'm not going to bang on them. But the ones I'm going to bang on is the Hebrew Israelites who are the root to the One West camps. Those are the idiots on the corner. <laughs> you a bitch. You this. I'm Native American. I'm Mexican. Right. I'm connected. You are from the Naphtali, Naphtali tribe or from this tribe. Dumb. Listen, stop right. it. Those guys are agents. Let me tell you why I say that. Legitimately, the Jews, the white Jews that came over, right, in America, they made New York. Did you know that they made New York was once considered Israel? Look up Mordecai Noah. Mm -hmm. Whoever watches this live, look up Mordecai Noah and Israel in upstate New York. And what you're going to find, family, is that upstate New York, where I live, was considered Israel. They made it Israel. Then after that, they, this is what they did. They, they, they hired a guy by the name of Jake Spatlovich. He went to Ethiopia, and what he did was he told the, the, the Ethiopians that they were Jews. So he got a fund from a guy. Who, when we talk about conspiracy theories, who's, whose name always pop up with the bankers? Whose name always pop up out of the blue? Uh, Jewish? Yeah, Jewish bankers. Who always pop up? Rothschilds. Am, am Rothschild, I correct? Right, you ever right. heard of Rothschild name before? You, A lot of conspiracies, right? You, yeah, yeah, of course. Right. But right. check this out. The Rothschilds literally funded Jake Spatlovich. And his job was to look for Jews in Ethiopia. Now, that job, this is not a conspiracy theory, bro. This is a fact that I'm telling you right now. He paid him and gave him money a Polish Jew, Fetlovich, to look for Jews in Ethiopia. Why? So that when they find them, they will say, oh, that's our brothers. We are connected. So they had a guy named Ford. Ford started the whole thing. He went back right. to Ethiopia. This is um, Josiah Ford. Right. He was a part of Marcus yeah, Garvey. Yeah, i right. And he wanted Marcus Garvey mm -hmm. actually kicked him out because he wanted Garvey to start pushing Judaism. But in the same time, he was yep. being funded by this white boy who was being funded by the Rothschilds. Very interesting. Damn. So now, after right. he died, Wentworth, he turned it over to Wentworth before he died. Wentworth was a guy, he was all spooky into D. Lawrence and working magical tricks and all this craziness. He You're talking about Matthew? Yeah, Wentworth Matthews, Matthews right. So yeah, from Matthew, the commandment right. keeper. So now he now mm -hmm. takes over yep. and he went to Ethiopia. Um, Fetlovich took him to Ethiopia and convinced him like, hey, take over. You guys are really the Jews and da, 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 da. But what they were trying mm -hmm. to do is those white Jews were trying to establish themselves and align them. So when they eventually got an Israel, they could say, hey, you see, we are related to these Ethiopian Jews and we're connected. So that's how they actually paid off and got the whole 1948 thing. I said, yeah, we are the real Jews. Because some of these people are just connected because of either trade or they are converts. And now they want to take over this whole Jewish paradigm. But anyway, so now Wentworth now decides, I'm going to become a rabbi and follow this. And he was getting funding at the same time from Fetlovich, who was getting money from the Rothschilds. So these guys were agents mm -hmm. from the jump. They were fake from the jump. Uh -huh. So now he now carries on, and then one West now, Ar I, um, Araya and Abba Bivins or whatever, broke off in the 69, 60s, and started their own organization called One West, and that's where ISUPK uh -huh. and IUIC and all of them come from. So they are fake and agents right. from the jump. They were financed by white Jews, Rothschild family. So this is why this that's propaganda is out there. But at the end of the day, family, we know they're fake. And I'm going to do everything in my power to, 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 to teach and let everybody know how fake they are.
they are fake as a two dollar bill, right. as a three dollar bill, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. Beautiful, beautifully said. And, you know, and this is exactly what we have been saying for quite some time as well. That one West began with a bunch of masons and rabbis that learned Judaic customs from the white men, mm -hmm. and a lot of brothers hate us for it. And I've been watching you, just like a lot of Latinos and Native Americans have been watching your videos. They've been watching your videos. I've been sharing your videos with uh, with our people in this time as well, so that they're able to have that information that you just brought out. You know, and. I know you have a lot of more facts. You have a, you you you've done a beautiful research, thoroughly research when it comes to the customs and the migration patterns of West Africans. You know, mm -hmm. because again, uh, the agenda is that you know a lot of uh, Africans of the diaspora or the scattered uh, Africans from North, Central, and South America are the actual Native Americans when that's an actual lie. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. You put it beautifully when you said, you know, that that they they only learn the customs from the white men, and that's a, that's all there is to it. And a lot of Latinos, Native Americans, are subscribing to that nonsense as well. Yep. And it's insane that you now you have a lot of Latinos, Native Americans saying that, oh, you know, well, you know, they're the tribes, they're the head tribe, Judah, this and the third, you know. And so it's like it's like you just said, there's a lot of uh, West Africans that were sent. Uh, throughout Latin America and North America and the Caribbean islands that come from different tribes. Mm -hmm. So how can they be Buddha? How can this be a Benjamite in, in Jamaica? But then, you know, the people in, in Puerto Rico are actually, uh, you know, the tribe will eat from this and then through. It's insane. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, that's the pseudo information that they've been pushing I out. I think, I think. And I like, mm -hmm. the, I, think, I like, I like, I like when you brought out, you know, about uh, Rabbi Matthews because a lot of brothers don't understand that Rabbi Matthews is the one that pushed out um, uh, various, you know, agendas uh, when it comes to the color scriptures in the Bible. When it says, well, King Solomon was black or this was black and this and that and third. Well, that's not the case, you know, but, uh, you know, you put it beautifully. Uh, you, you, I've seen you, I've seen you debate the Sikari, you know, al you've had conversations with him when you basically schooled the brother, like, he didn't know what to say. Yep. You know, yep. and, and and the sad thing is that these brothers are, are using a lot of pseudo information, non primary sources. I when think you actually brought out Yeah, mm -hmm. I bring out sources all day long. You see the, the problem is this, man. All I'm saying to every person who wants to claim a Hebrew, if you want to claim you're a Hebrew by faith, that is one thing. But also we don't even need to know that. That's your personal business, whatever you believe in. That's your personal business. Once you start following a teachings and it, there's no soundproof behind it, listen, man, 90, 99% of these brothers you see on Sonnet or any channel, they can't even read or parse the Hebrew text. The problem is they can't even read the text. They use Deuteronomy 28.68, which they don't even understand grammatically. They don't, they, they, it's mistranslated in the King James. And what King James did was those white translators purposely put in it that they would be slaves and they would be um, on ships as slaves. They would be sold as slaves. So when they mistranslate, because it actually says you will sell yourself into slavery. That's basically what it says. You will sell yourself. But in the King James, it says that you will be sold as slaves when the, the translation from the Hebrew, when you parse it, it actually says you will sell yourself. That changed the entire verse. But why would the King James translators do that? Because they wanted to justify enslaving our black African people. So while they, they put right. it in there, they have a book called the Slave Bible. And that verse is in the Slave Bible as one of the main verses. And the reason why, again, let me repeat, the reason why they do it is because they wanted to justify that you're being enslaved. So it looked on as a curse that you wasn't following God. But the truth is they wanted to justify how the hell they were treating you and mistreating you, you and your family. So I'm saying to everybody that's watching, whether you believe God feel or not, do your own research. We are not Hebrew Israelites. Anyone who came over on a slave ship identified with who they were. And by the way, mm. remember... When they brought the Bible, the Portuguese brought the Bible in the, 14, in the 1400s to the kingdom of Congo, they tried to convert everybody. So they converted the big, the big timers first. And once they converted them, 
let me say this to your family. Once they converted them, they sent them back. And the, the, the kings was like, yo, this is kind of cool, man. They're kind of they trying to match it up with our, their traditions and say, yeah, this is kind of cool, man. I like this Christian stuff. So what they did then, they brought the Bible to them. They didn't have a Bible in West Africa before that. They had, they had I mean, right. the, the people who converted to Judaism with the Talmudic schools and connected, they had something called the Torah in the Arabic. But they didn't have a Bible mm -hmm. in English and, and, and saying, hey, I'm going to convert people. So the Portuguese decided they, they wanted to convert Christians. If you refuse to convert to Christianity in West Africa, you, you were on the first ship. And that's how we know they didn't know about no damn Bible because these people refused. They kept their, their culture. So they said, let's put, the, let's put these, these Africans who are rebellious on the ships first. Let's get rid of them first so that when we bring them over here, then we'll convert them. But the people were hard to convert. They kept their culture. You could see their culture because they had the Ekpe society. They had secret societies here that they got from the Igbo or the Nigerian culture or the Yoruba culture. So what I, I, I want to mm. emphasize to everyone, we are not Hebrew Israelites at all. We are not connected. It's a belief system that is built off a of fake doctrine. There's no justification. All you got to do is take one simple DNA test. And the DNA test will show your migration patterns and where you come from. And all of it, if you got E1, B1, A, it's going to lead back to E, to the E marker that's right there in East Africa, E M M76 or whatever it is, M96. And once you realize that you migrated 14, 15,000 years ago and that their E marker is like 40, 50,000 years ago, you, you can't claim no E marker because Israelites didn't exist 50,000 years ago. That already kills the argument. So your E1, B1, right. A in you, family, goes back, the sequence goes back up to 99. That's what they have counted. And it's 14,600 years ago, E1, B1, A started in West Africa. And one, one route came to West Africa and another route went to South Africa. So you have E1, B1, A in both places. That's our main marker. Our paternal line is E1, B1, A. All right, so we need to make that clear to everybody. We are E1, B1, a majority of African Americans, majority of Caribbean Americans, E1, B1, a. We can't go right. around it. Exactly, and then a lot of a lot of brothers need to understand that the whole marker of E1, B1, a is basically a a marker for um, the sons of, of of Ham, or what we what your brothers call Ham, right? Or Ham, or Ham, mm -hmm. Ham, Ham. Mm -hmm. You know, and that comes from, you know, the progenitor of the black races. Mm -hmm. You know, the the Shemites, the Shemites clearly look differently than the Hamites uh, 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 in phenotypes and genotypes mm -hmm. as well. So um, let, let me ask you this other question, because there is a lot of brothers within the black Hebrew Israelite community saying that um, the the land of Judah is in, is in West Africa. And you know what they use? They use the whole, uh, I think, mask, uh, uh, some mask from the 1960s where, where it says Wida, Wida, Wida land, and they translate it into Judah, not knowing that, you know, I think it was the French that uh, that changed the name to Judah because they thought they were saying Judah instead of Wida, Wida, that's what it's called. Yeah, let me break, let me break, let me break it about? down to you. If you look at the 1727 maps, you won't see that. After the 1727 maps, you'll see judah with a j-u-d-a all right i spoke about this on my show um two days ago the word actually mm -hmm. is hueda h-u-e-d-a right now right remember this though this is outsiders that are calling them that because the real name mm -hmm. is really g-l-u-e-e -E. that's what the indigenous people call themselves now right. when they came there and they say, oh, our name is Hueda, H-U-E-D-A. The Portuguese and the, um, the Portuguese said they were Ajuda, A-J-U-D-A, not J-U-D-A-H. Then the French says J-U-D-A because the H and J is interchangeable in some languages. So that's why the H, that's how the J got into the conversation. So mm. what, what, when they say Oida, O-U-I-D-A-H or Oida, or WIDA, W A H Y D A H, it's basically a translation issue. These people worshiped a mm -hmm. snake god. The women were a part mm -hmm. of the army. 
I won't even get into the whole rituals that they do because no Hebrew Israelite practices those rituals. But what I'll say is, you just look at the God that they worship. How is it that they remember their name, but they didn't remember how they worship? They worshiped a snake God. That was the God of, of the people of Benin at the time. So we know who those people mm -hmm. are, and we know actually who was in charge, who was the king, and all that stuff. It's actually extremely well documented by white folks. But just remember, though, if somebody calls you a name, if you're a Native American, or if you're somebody aboriginal to here, remember this. You never go by the name that the enemy calls you. You go by the name right. that you call yourself. You understand? That's so right. that name That's that right. they call them, they never call themselves that. The outsiders call them that. And that's the important part to it. So we know Judah was not mm -hmm. there. And why they spell the Judah without an H, I don't know on the map. You're going to have to ask the translators, why did they leave the H off? Because it wasn't Judah of the biblical text. These guys are fraud. This guy was debating me the other morning, told me that um, Benjamin and Levi was written at the, the point of no return. And it, it was just, these guys are those programmed. <laughs> they are idiots. I'm telling you. They are borderline right. idiots. It's all rhetoric. Yeah, it's all stupid right. rhetoric. And they're turning you into an idiot. All we got to do is basic logic. Right. Now some of them is saying that right. the E1, B1A marker of the um is now an Israelite marker. When we know E1, B1A started in West Africa, how could it be an Israelite marker? But, again, anything to try to say that you're an Israelite. Anything. It's craziness. Right. Right, right, exactly. Um, one last thing uh, before you go. I don't know if you, you know, if you're in a rush, or you gotta go, or you have some time to come and say. But um, what else? I was gonna say. Um, oh yeah. So so now there is this group of people, or there is an actual community of uh, a lot of black folks, you know, saying that they're the Native Americans. And the reason why they're saying that is because, according to them, there's no slave ships or record of the slave ships. That, that, that they arrived from, uh, there's no record of them. So therefore, if there's no records of the, of these so-called slave ships that they came on, then therefore they're not Africans themselves. Hey, it, so um, I think uh, I, I, I just came across this research where they actually found the last remaining, uh, uh, um, um, what is it, the, the last remains of the last uh, slave ship that arrived on this side of the world. I'm going to send you the link so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, bro, uh, I've, 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 I've heard it. I've, to yeah, that? these we call them the Abos. That's what we call them. You have the ADOS mm -hmm. movement. You have the Abos. You have the Hebrew Israelites. You have the Moors. You even have Moors who want to claim that they're from here too. This is just another <laughs> identity crisis. They don't want to be African because yeah. African is look, looked on as booty scratches. They don't know the real history of Africa, so they don't want to claim it. <laughs> they feel we were we were nothing. And it goes back to the Abrahamic faith of, of the Ham Talmudic story that the blacks are, are, are Hamites and they're cursed. They're from Canaan. So this is, this is the issue right. right now. The issue is we don't know who we are, so we want to be whatever we could clutch on to. So they feel if they claim that they're Aboriginal, they'll get some sort of monetary or they could be part, they could claim the Cherokee or the Choctaw. And they could get some sort of money and get some casino money. So they, it, it's just a whole new flim flam sham that they come up with to try to. But but the craziest thing now is they had a reparations um um meeting today, hearing in Congress. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these people who are claiming mm -hmm. that they're aboriginals or abos are leaving that to try to be a part of the ADOS movement because they think that they're going to get reparation. So they always say, follow Boom. the money, right? They always say, follow the money. Right. So they think they're going to get some reparation, yeah. so they're going to follow that money now. That's all it is, bro. That's all it is, man. Craziness. Craziness, man. Our people are destroyed right. because of lack of knowledge, man. Exactly, exactly. And then we're trying to, like yourself and many other brothers, including myself and along other brothers, we're trying to re-educate our own people as well because Latinos and Native Americans are all in that nonsense as well. And a lot of black folks are also lost in the sauce, you know? And it's just it's just like you just said earlier, a lot of these people are just saying rhetoric that they, they, that they learned from the 1960s, you know, uh, when this whole one was, uh, you know, Masonic, uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, camps uh, began. And that's all there is. It's just it's just rhetoric. And, 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 and the rhetoric is, is based on false information fallacies and a bunch of pseudo information to push an agenda mm -hmm. and the agenda is to deceive 
And it's just crazy, you know, it's just crazy that a lot of people are just lost in the sauce and just they believe everything that comes out of these people's mouths. You know, but but the but, but the idea is that okay, well you're screaming out on the streets, but how are you helping your people? How are you where are you building your communities? Where are you building, you know, self sustaining homes, this and under third jobs and whatnot? You know, and a lot of these folks are in these camps and they're they're making money off of people. I don't know if you know IUIC. You know, yeah. IUIC is one of the biggest camps. Yeah, IUIC, you know IUIC is the biggest camp. You say, how much they charge it for what? Do you know how much they charge for a Passover per person? Like $200? Between. No, that's that's for the garment. That's just for the oh, garment. Oh, man. They charge, they charge between $400 to $550 to $600 per family, not to mention the 150 $180 per garment that you have to buy to be able to match. Everybody else has to wear the same thing, and you got to buy it from within. On top of that, I'm in the you, wrong, you, bro, they got, bro, you know, I'm in the wrong business. That's all I got to say. I'm in the goddamn <laughs> wrong business, man. I need to, I need to start know, my but, own camp. Oh, man. This is craziness. Right, right. But right. you know what? You just, made a, you just made a great point. What are they doing for the community? But going and screaming at people, calling people bitches, hoes, calling black women, seeing them passing. Oh, the, it's the man's fault. It's your fault. Why the man left? Call a black woman a bitch. They, they, they're not doing nothing for the community. I, I, I mean, I, I admire if they, if they, you know, they have a prison, they have a prison program, supposedly, these camps. But what's the purpose of you coming out of prison and getting into the prison of your mind? So you leave in one prison Boom. to enter another prison. Come on, to go into these Thank camps you. to be shouting and carrying on like a damn crazy man. All I'm saying, this is it, man. Right. You are not connected to the people that were in the ancient Near East who, who were actually Canaan people who, and then the Israel people developed, they, they were set apart actually. It's actually true. They basically didn't want to be attached to the Canaanites, so they formed their own little group. For like 30 years, Israel existed. Yes. But after that, there was no more Israel. Mm -hmm. There was no more Israel after 800 BC. So I, I say to everybody right now, if you really want to know who you are, take a couple of DNA tests, see where it leads, and just go from there. But you are normally, based on what we have on record, you are a West African you can't, you come from West or Central Africa, you can't go around that. You can't. You could make up whatever you want to be. You could wake up tomorrow and say you want to be a cat for all I care. I'm Garfield. I might want to I, I might feel like being Heathcliff tomorrow. I eat a bunch of food and be like a fat cat, you know? <laughs> so you could be whatever mm -hmm. you want to be, but stop pushing this theology and go around and say you are this when you're not. So I'm going to be on their neck until I die. You know, so I'm I'm not going to hold <laughs> yeah, up. I, know. I don't care what they write about me. I don't care what they say about me. I don't care. I'm going to be on their necks. They are well, phony and of, fake. A lot of brothers, right, a lot of brothers hate on you, you know, and i seen it, you know, I don't know. I think you, Um, I was watching one of your live videos one time where you were about to have this brother named uh, Jeremiah Judah. I think, I, you know, you know who I'm talking Weirdo. about. He, he likes to talk a lot of crap. And he... I mean, and whenever he gets on his life, he's obviously drunk. Everybody knows that. But, um, you know, he just talks a lot of smack, a lot of, a lot of crap that he doesn't know what he's saying. But uh, my point in saying that is that a lot of brothers hate on you because you're basically bringing the blades and, you know, destroying the pseudo information from a lot of the scams that they've been teaching for the past. Well, I'm, sh I'm sorry, that, that they've been lying for the past 60 years, <laughs> since the 1960s when the white men set up you know, one West and, and a lot of this may sound in camps anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right, man, listen, I'm going to let you go. I'm just going to say thank you for the invite, brother. I appreciate it. We definitely could do this anytime where I could definitely go into, um, you know, I mean, with the, with the Aboriginal stuff, I'll say this, Dane Calloway is one of the main players with that. And, um, mm -hmm. you got a couple of crazies out there, Phoenix moon and some others. But I mean, again, it's an identity crisis. We don't know who we are, so we are trying to latch on to whoever looks successful or we're looking at how we could gain followers or make money out of something. If we were, if we, right. if those Hebrew Israelites would take the time just to unite with the people around them, fix their credit, mm -hmm. develop some sort of economic foundation for the future, get some life insurance, pass on a legacy to your kids, do something productive right. with your life. Buy land. Exactly. Right. You Buy know, land. But, 
Hey man, I'm I'm gonna leave it right here, man. I gotta yeah, get out. Hey, of um, you know, it's thank you for coming in. You know, we bring the information out. You know, being claiming that you're a Hebrew Israelite when you're not is a serious, serious crime against humanity. What you're doing is you're developing a cult that's gonna that's gonna is diminishing your life. My my cousin right now is married to one, and she actually moved out and left the dude. And it's sad because I knew them for over. 10, 20 years together and now the dude mm -hmm. came to America and he's breaking up with his woman his woman left him, moved out because he's a part wow. of this cult and it, it's sad man because I, I told her, I said I bet you once you leave out the house he's going to come back and he's on the phone with them and, and oh, what should I do and he, he quit his job because he has this attitude now wow. because he feels he's super, he's, he's chosen so he could quit his job and don't support the family that he's with because guess what? The That's woman crazy. is supposed to support you. And it's really, it really hit me at home, family. It really hit me at home how these doctrines are. They are fake. They are phony. They, they, they want you to get people pregnant and, and live off the woman. They don't believe a man, a man. A man is not a man in these organizations. This is why they have five wives and then get these women pregnant and let them go on welfare until the government all... We don't know where the father is, so they could get welfare, and they're just living a foul life, man. And all they're doing is putting money in the hierarchy, giving money to the, to the captains and the generals or who is in charge. And this shit is just sad, and it's just it's just craziness, family. It's just crazy, and I'm just I'm sick of all of them, all of them. I'm sick right. of every single one of these camps. They serve no purpose. I don't care who they clean up, who was drunk. The Jehovah Witness, they go from door to door. They clean up people every day. Even the Mormons, who I would never join, clean up black men and women every day. Who cares? Right. It's done by everybody out there. So don't feel special. That's like me, that's like me going to a homeless shelter and videotaping it. Why would I do that? That's not genuine. Come on, man. Everybody's out there putting in work. You don't need to advertise what you're doing because you're basically putting the person in the prison of their minds right now with the way that you're you're mm. schooling these people it's just ridiculous we ain't got no connection to ancient israel family it's sad i'm glad i'm glad i'm out of that mindset i'm glad i left it years ago we're not connected any way shape or form to ancient israel ancient canaan we're not sumerians we're none of that we are west africans find out who you are and latch on to that i am proud to be a khan I'm proud of Wagadu, which was originally um, um, from the Suniki people started Wagadu and then they migrated down to where Ghana is today. They was closer to Northwest Africa and then they moved down. I am proud of my history. I'm proud. Although they themselves were involved with slavery. I'm proud. I'm proud of the fact that we, we controlled the gold industry for so many years. I'm proud of the Igbo part of me because we were part of the whole metallurgy um, the, the iron smelting. I'm proud of the knock culture, the terracottas. I'm proud of what we used to do. I'm proud of all of that. I'm proud of the Yoruba culture. I'm proud of the fact that we, we had um, different elements within our cultures that we did. I'm proud of everything, the good and the bad. It comes with all. I'm proud of the spiritual systems that they follow. I'm proud of the personhood where they teach you how to live by certain laws. I'm proud of how they bury people. I'm proud of everything in West Africa. I'll take it as it is. I'll take it today. I'll take it yesterday. And I'll take it tomorrow. I am proud to be West African. <laughs> no part of it. I'll, right. I'm taking all of it with me. The good and the bad. Peace and love, brother. That's right. I appreciate it. One love. Peace and love, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you, for, thank you for coming in. All right, cool. All right, shalom. Good night. All right, folks, there you have it. This has been an edition of Keeping It Real Wednesdays with Ancient Watchmen. You heard it. Garfield is, you know, a very powerful brother. You know, I've been watching him. I've been watching his lives. I've been watching his debates. I've been watching the, you know, the, um, the information that he brings out to basically expose uh, the black Hebrew Israelites, this, their pseudo information, their false information, their fallacies. They're false doctrines and this and that and the third. And just like you heard it, we, we, we've been saying it as well that One West and a lot of these camps, I'm saying all these camps began with Masons and rabbis that learned under the white men. 
and a lot of you Latinos and Native, Native Americans must be aware of what's going on and the deception. And this is why a lot of brothers hate us because we are telling you the truth. We are bringing out the facts, just like the brother said it. Obviously, the brother is just freestyle, but when you watch his videos, when you watch his uh, debates on, on YouTube, you'll see that he brings out actual facts. And a lot of, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, so-called leaders from these congregations and these camps flee from him. They don't like him. Why? Because he just says it wrong. Right? But, um, you know, uh, thank you for joining us. You know, again, this, this has been an edition of Keeping It Real Wednesdays with Ancient Watchmen. Uh, hopefully, we'll able to keep this up every Wednesday. You know, there's going to be um, a show. So, um, stay tuned. Um, we have a YouTube channel at uh, Ancient Watchmen. Uh, follow us um, on Instagram as well, Ancient.Watchmen. And also, uh, you can join our group at Guardians of Truth. Uh, with that, I say Shalom. Thank you for joining us, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Shalom. <laughs>